And I saw, when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, saying, Come and see. Thunder Radio with Christian J. Pento. Okay, praise the Lord, you guys, and welcome. I'm Chris Pinto. This is Noise of Thunder Radio. Today on the show, we're going to talk about uh, some of these hot topics in the news right now, in particular... Uh, the, this association with David Duke, Ilhan Omar, uh, and then we're going to talk about the Republican Party. We're also going to talk about what's going on in Hawaii with the Second Amendment and uh, Hawaii passing a, a bill. Gun, this is from the NRA website, NRA ILA. That is their uh, division, their Institute for Legislative Action. That's where they actually go into the courts and they fight for gun rights and defending the Second Amendment. Uh, but it's part of the NRA. But they've got an article posted on their website on Hawaii gun control bills passed chamber of origin and resolution introduced to redefine or repeal the Second Amendment, basically to overturn the Heller case, but to do it through legislation the Heller case uh, was where the Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court, declared that the right to bear arms is an individual right, not a collective right for when an, uh, a militia is going to be assembled. That was the whole argument. And the court ruled that it is an individual right. And of course, that's something that, that's always been taken for granted in the country. But now that we have the anti-gunners and they're trying to disarm America, uh, that has been called into question more and more. But we'll talk more about that story going forward. There, uh, there is this disturbing development with these radical Muslims who are in the Democratic Party, but probably the most prominent of them right now is Representative Ilhan Omar, who has made all of these anti-Semitic comments has made words, you know, comments to really against the state of Israel, really against the state of Israel. She very clearly favors the Palestinian Muslim cause, which is of itself not terribly surprising. Uh, I find it interesting. I, I, I just don't know why nobody is calling her and uh, these other Muslims, Keith Ellison and Rashida Tlaib, why nobody is calling them, you know, when they talk about foreign policy and they want to talk about Israel, why doesn't anybody call them on the millions of slaves that are currently enslaved in Africa and the Middle East by Muslims? Many of them black Muslims still possess slaves all over Africa. Why doesn't anybody confront them and say, hey, you know, if you're going to talk about foreign policy, why don't we talk about going over to Africa and putting an end to the Islamic slave trade there? Why don't you use your power as a, an American congressman or congresswoman and uh, use that influence to encourage your fellow Muslims to stop enslaving blacks in Africa? But nobody says a word. Now, when you study history for Great Britain and the United States, uh, missionaries going into Africa, this was a central issue. And they, they called out to the British Empire and to the United States because uh, both Britain and America, we put an end to slavery in our countries. And you had men like Dr. David Livingston who was really calling out for the great Christian powers of the earth to try and do something about the situation in Africa to once and for all put an end to this horrid practice of slavery uh, practiced by the Muslim slavers. But of course, they've been doing it for some 1,400 years. Yeah, we have all this pandering to Islam in our country that goes on and on and on. And Muslims are portrayed as victims and Islamophobia nonsense and all this other garbage that they're promoting. But nobody ever says a word. 
about the Islamic slave trade in Africa and reportedly in Saudi Arabia as well. I mean, it's been reported for years. I've read uh, all kinds of stories. Uh, I mean, they're, 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 according to one report, they are selling castrated black men as eunuchs in Saudi Arabia. That's according to one account. They're, you sell, they're selling Yazidi uh, girls in Saudi Arabia, in the slave market, putting them up on the slave block. Yet nobody wants, everybody wants to talk about Islam. Nobody wants to talk about this. Uh, you've got the situation with uh, the Professor Brown, Professor Jonathan Brown at Georgetown University, that had a, he, who was a white Muslim, and he taught a class where he openly taught, he was giving a lecture, and he taught in his lecture that slavery and rape were perfectly acceptable practices because they were practiced by the Prophet Muhammad. Of course, when he gave the lecture, he, he was talking to a bunch of fellow Muslims, and he thought nobody else was listening. It was only because it was picked up by uh, Jihad Watch and Pamela Geller and th those who pay attention to what's going on with Islamic teaching and influence and this kind of thing. If they hadn't have picked it up, nobody would have known because mainstream media would not have said a word. But the fact that they're teaching this at Georgetown University, I mean, we can only imagine how many other things are being taught to the students there that we don't know anything about. You know, we know that they've got the, uh, the bridge initiative there where they are uh, promoting the false doctrine of Islamophobia because that is being used as a doorway to open the door to Sharia law. And we need to pay attention to that, brethren, as one day becomes another in this country, because that is where these Muslims in Congress and apparently where the Democratic Party is headed. The fact that Ilhan Omar, you know, gave out one tweet, one message after another, after another, after another, and you had leading Democrats who were speaking out against this. And then they started trying to protect her and guard her. And even Nancy Pelosi seems to have given in to protecting her comments. That tells you, I mean, on issues where if, if you have the homosexuals are offended by the Muslims, now the Jews offended by the Muslims. In both cases, what the Democrats do is they rally around the Muslims, around Islam. And Islam is the cause that they defend above the others. They defend Islam over and above all these other causes. And that should be very, very disturbing because they want to advance political Islam in our country. And it's political Islam. It's not just some individual person who happens to be a Muslim. That's not the issue. Political Islam. That is the real concern. Uh, well, here we've got a story. Thank the Lord. And this is on Freedom Outpost. Evangelical leader calls on Department of Justice to investigate Representative Ilhan Omar's ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. And this is uh, from a female evangelical leader, Lori Cardoza Moore, who serves as special envoy to the United Nations for human rights and anti-Semitism on behalf of 44 million Christians has started a petition that seeks to remove Minnesota Representative Ilhan Omar from Congress, but she is also calling on the Justice Department to investigate her ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. And there's no question, uh, the, the ties of Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib to these radical Islamic groups, that should be without question. I mean, with the, the situation that we have since 9-11 in this country, there, we should not allow Muslims to be running for office in our country. It, it simply should not be permitted. you got people who insist on being sworn into office on the Koran, on a book that openly denies virtually all of the principles of our Constitution. It's not possible that these individuals can uphold constitutional law and, and be faithful Muslims. That's just not possible. And the fact that they've got to be sworn in on a copy of the Koran, that's, that's the most telling part of all. 
This is a book that says that the Christian and the Jew, uh, that we're, we're infidels, that uh, we're very, very filthy, very, very dirty things. As uh, Yasser Qadi uh, said, we're, we're polytheists, okay? And uh, that you can kidnap, rape, enslave, and kill uh, these infidels wherever you find them. Okay, I mean, this is all part of the teachings of the Quran, and then with that, the Hadiths uh, and the historic teachings of Islam for 1,400 years. And the idea that we're going to have political leaders in our Congress, in our government, really anywhere under those circumstances uh, ought to be rejected by every American. It's why we have to reclaim the original understanding of our Constitution. Now, with all of this, uh, the fact that David Duke, David Duke, the, uh, the former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, who has railed against the so-called Jewish conspiracy for years, in favor of white supremacist dogma for many years, has now finally come out of the conservative closet. You know, they keep trying to associate him with... Trump and the Republican Party, etc. They keep trying to, to associate him with that and, and as though the Klan is a Republican outfit. But what, what he's revealing now, because he's thrown his support behind Ilhan Omar because of her comments about the Jewish manipulation of the U.S. government in favor of Israel. And that's right in line with everything that David Duke has been teaching people and telling people for years. It's, it's, if you go online and you listen to David Duke for five or ten minutes in one of his videos, it's all about the Jewish conspiracy against our country and, and really against Western civilization and against white people. And that's not to say that you don't have in the Marxist community and among those who are socialists and communists and radical leftists, there's no question that you have Jewish people who are part of that community. No question about it. There's no point denying it, because it's true. But, but to zero in on the, the Jewish people who are a part of the radical left, and then to ignore everybody else, all of the non-Jewish people, uh, who are really the great majority on the left, is illogical. It's just selectively targeting a certain group. And, and really repeating the misguided ideas of Hitler and the Nazi movement in Germany and ignoring all the inconsistencies, uh, which is unfortunate. But now he's come out and he's spoken in favor. He's called uh, Ilhan Omar the most important member of the U.S. Congress. The most important member. But see, I have, I've said and I believe now for several years, that the reason the Democratic Party supports the Muslims is because the Democrats and the Muslims worked together back in the 19th century on the slave trade. It was the Muslims who kidnapped the blacks. Now, you're talking black and Arab Muslims would kidnap blacks from the inner parts of Africa and bring them up to the northern coastline of Africa and wait for the slave ships, for the white men to show up. And the white men typically did not go kidnap blacks. The white men showed up and they purchased the blacks who were already enslaved by the Muslims. That's how the ordinary practice of slavery happened. And so I think this historic relationship between the Democrats and the Muslims, and then I would throw in you know, the third tier of this whole thing would be the Jesuits because they were very much into slavery. And today, the Jesuits support both the Democrats and the Muslims. I mean, these are, these are historic allies. It's just that the history books have been changed and people don't realize what's happening. All right, let's go to our commercial break. We're going to talk more when we come back right after this.
Christian Film Ministry, Adalam Films presents A Lamp in the Dark, the untold history of the Bible. Enter into a world of saints and martyrs battling spies, assassins and wolves in sheep's clothing. A Lamp in the Dark unfolds the fascinating history, the Bible and the lives of the saints who fought to preserve it. This exciting look into the times of valiant men of faith, such as John Wycliffe, William Tyndale, and Martin Luther, is a must-see for any follower of Christ. Filled with rich visual graphics and dramatic reenactments, A Lamp in the Dark is an epic documentary, a powerful witnessing tool for church and Bible study groups around the world. Share with your church, your family, and friends the untold history of the Bible today. Hello, I'm Brandon House. In April of 2013, I found a Mountain House distributor and ordered some freeze-dried food for my family because I had become concerned about what was happening in America, our lack of national security, the threat to our power grid. I also knew living in Memphis on the new Madrin Fault that there is the possibility of an earthquake. I also know that uh, ice storms can cause the power to go out here, not to mention the threat of terrorism. There were many reasons. So I contacted the company Mountain House and asked if I could become a distributor of their product. I had some of their food when I was in high school on a couple camping trips, and it's really good. But now Worldview Weekend has been approved to be a distributor for Mountain House. And if you're interested, you can now go into the bookstore at worldviewweekend.com forward slash bookstore and check out some of the freeze-dried food that you can order. We have one pack that's available. It's a bucket of food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for 14 days for one person. Figure out how many are in your family. Figure out how many days you want to have food ready to be put into boiling hot water and have a good meal and make your order. Now, again, you can order it from someone else, but if you order it from Worldview Weekend... We're not going to charge any shipping and handling, free shipping and handling. Secondly, it's another way for us to generate revenue to underwrite the expenses of running Worldview Weekend, our radio and television ministry, and our free conference ministry. For more details, just simply visit our bookstore, worldviewweekend.com forward slash bookstore, worldviewweekend.com forward slash bookstore. Okay, we are back. Praise the Lord, you guys. I'm Chris Pinto. This is Noise of Thunder Radio. Thanks for staying with the show today. Now we're going to talk about why this issue is so very important for us to pay attention to and for us to do whatever we can to resist the encroachments of political Islam into our system. And here's a story that uh, that I saw earlier and this has been posted on a number of uh, conservative Christian websites about something that happened in Minnesota. Minnesota ex-Muslim arrested after speaking with Muslims. And then he said when he was uh, being interviewed about this, this should not be happening in this country. And this is a story about a, uh, uh, an Iranian Christian who was raised up as a Muslim, he was raised up as a Muslim, Pastor Ramin Parsa, Pastor Ramin Parsa, and you hear his story online. I listened to it earlier this morning. It was uh, just a great way to start the day because he is Pastor Parsa is. I think he's. I think he's a great example of a believer from anywhere because he has had to overcome a lot of opposition and persecution. This kind of thing. You hear his testimony. But he has a very, very positive attitude. Uh, He says, praise the Lord and hallelujah quite a bit. And it's contagious, his uh, very pro, you know, his zeal for Christ and for the gospel. And he's very, very thankful as somebody who came out of Islam and was raised up being taught all of the Islamic hatred and cruelty and this kind of thing. And he just knew there was something wrong with it. And he gives his testimony about one day hearing the gospel. And then he eventually uh, prayed to the Lord Jesus Christ and became a born-again believer. Praise the Lord. Well, he gets out of Iran. 
he comes to America and he's he loves this country. He's very, very thankful for the United States, as many of us are thankful to God, as we should be, because there's many blessings that God has given to our country and a blessed Christian people through this country, even with all of the, uh, the problems and then the faults and the flaws and this kind of thing. Sure. But you're going to have that anywhere because we live in a fallen world. We're not going to be able to go any place where you don't have problems. So the problems are there, but there are with them many blessings. In fact, one of the men that I interviewed when I was interviewing Herb Titus for True Christian History of America, which please continue in prayer for that film, brethren, because we're in the midst of editing and doing the final shooting, the final filming. In fact, in fact we are planning a trip uh, for um, five to seven days in May to do some final filming of historic sites that pertain to the founding of our country. So, but sites over in the UK, in the Czech Republic, uh, really fascinating information that we're putting together, which I'll be talking more about uh, in upcoming programs. But many blessings have been given by God to our country. And Pastor Amin Parsa, he, he's, he's the kind of legal immigrant that I think all Americans embrace because he recognizes the, the, uh, the goodness of our country, that, that we have freedom here. But he is seeing that freedom eroded because of socialism and because of political Islam. And he talks about that in the, uh, in the speech that he gave uh, at the state capitol in Minnesota. Uh, but anyway, his story in a nutshell, he was at the Mall of America last year in August. He was at the Mall of America and he ran into some Somali Muslims, and uh, he, they were talking casually, and they asked him if he was a Muslim. He said no. He had been a Muslim. He became a Christian, and they said, oh, really? Why? And, and he started to tell them his story, and there was this casual conversation. Well, apparently some other Muslim gal, woman, heard what was going on, and uh, got upset about it and ran to get, and she wasn't even a part of the group, apparently. Uh, but she ran to get a security guard who then came and confronted this pastor and told him he couldn't uh, be soliciting there in the uh, in the mall and, and whatnot. And uh, he said, well, I'm not soliciting. I was just having a private conversation or whatever. Anyway, it broke up. He goes to get coffee. And as he comes out of the coffee shop, there's two security guards there who tell him he's under arrest for soliciting there in the mall. They handcuff him, take him down. He, they end up pressing charges against him, all because a Muslim woman went and complained about what? About him witnessing and, and communicating the gospel to Muslims. Now, I've talked about this before. This is the danger of Islam increasing in any country, especially a Christian country. This is the danger, because according to Islamic Sharia, you cannot preach the gospel to a Muslim and try to get them to convert, because it's unlawful, according to Sharia, for a Muslim to convert to Christianity. They get the death penalty for that. So to try and communicate the gospel to a Muslim, that is really a crime in the Islamic worldview, and according to Islamic law. And so this is why it is a danger to have Islam increasing politically and culture. It's bad enough culturally, but once they get political, once they get involved in your police departments and your local governments and this kind of thing, to where if you are out in a Muslim community or you're around Muslims and you're communicating or witnessing to them and they want you arrested, quite often we're seeing this over in the UK. In fact, uh, somebody posted a video where they showed uh, an Islamic teacher out on the street and then a Christian minister out on the street in London, both of them, and the Islamic guy was like totally cursing and just very, very offensive to the police officer, and the police officer puts up with this. Meanwhile, the Christian guy is actually very polite, but he's firm, 
that he's not going to stop preaching. He's in a public place. He has a right to do it. And they end up arresting him. So right now, all the toleration is for Islam. It's not for Christianity. They're throwing Christianity under the bus. And here we've got this situation in America. Now, thankfully, this, this case is still in the midst of being resolved and so on. And the pastor, Pastor Parsa, we should be in prayer for him and supporting him because this is a very important issue. And if America continues to imitate the path of what's been happening in Western Europe, remember in Western Europe, they have made it a crime for people to speak against Islam, against the Prophet Muhammad, against the Islamic religion. They are trying to do that here in the United States. If the Trump administration does not continue, if the Democrats gain more power in Congress, and if they retake the White House, I am, I am almost completely convinced one of the things they will try to do is to pass the resolution to condemn any sort of rhetoric against the Islamic religion to where they will make it a crime. You can be arrested and go to jail or pay a, a serious fine. That is the direction that they are headed. So forewarned is forearmed, brethren. All right, we are out of time. We're going to stop it there, but we will be back next time as the Lord leads us. Until then, God bless you guys. I'm Chris Pinto, and you've been listening to Noise of Thunder Radio.